so now that we have verified every connection. All right, stop, 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 stop. You see that guy? That guy? Yeah, I don't even know that guy. That guy knows nothing. That, that guy thought anything was possible. He, he had dreams like what kids have. He thought he could just grab all these modules and slap them together and be playing with iDrive in a matter of days. I've been through trivial amounts of pain. A pain similar to anyone who's worked on older cars, had a project car, or worked in retail. I've spent over 40 hours of my own time to get where I am today. So let's take a step back of how we started with that sad wuss to this. Are you not impressed? Are you not amazed? This is real life. It thinks I'm in Florida. Now, anyone who's tried to create an automotive bench knows this is an uphill battle. Now, from the get-go, auto manufacturers aren't the greatest fans of sharing their wiring diagrams or publicly sharing what their computers do and stuff like that. And unfortunately for this project, there's a good number of unlabeled wires here. Then, there's knowing what computers you need to accomplish your end goal. And you'd be surprised to learn that this is especially hard when you don't even own the car you're trying to bench. So I personally just like traced my steps. So I knew I wanted iDrive. Wow, that's really warm. It has this controller in the center console that you use to, is your main way to interact with it. You can also control um, some of the content that comes up on the gauge cluster. You can clear it from the iDrive unit, like your gas mileage. And then the unit has to interact some way knowing how to turn on. And the start button is connected to this hell hole. This is what I call the white box of hell. So what happens is this looks for your key when you press the power button and then tells everything to turn on, including the iDrive. Now, I could go on and on and absolutely decimate you with information about BMWs, but I'll save you the breath and summarize my findings over the last three or so months. So, the head unit communicates over a two-wire communication system called KCAN or KCAN2 to be more specific. That's the system that iDrive uses to know when, when to turn on, what the key position is, what you're doing with the controller, and if you're touching various favorite buttons. Now, I also talked about key position, but when you take a look at the schematic for the start button, you'll notice it doesn't d connect directly to KCAN. So, how does KCAN learn the key position? Bingo, that's right, back to the hell box. And big scary thing, there's probably over 200 wires to get messed up. Anyway, this computer checks what's going on with the start button and then communicates that onto KCAM. But for our purposes, the reason this is important is because it's not gonna unlock anything until it knows the key is present because it has a mobilizer, which is probably the easiest way to know that this isn't a Kia. So before I can even think about turning on the head unit, the giant white rectangle of pain needs to know if the key is present. So I added a key sensor and then another. Eventually I found myself down such a rabbit hole in my own research that I hired an intern, but she wasn't that great or very qualified, but she was an excellent motivator. Unfortunately, her behavior became quite inappropriate and overly flirtatious. I started questioning her commitment to the project and decided to let her go. And that's the extent of my research, more or less. Then it was time to put it all together. Of course, you need computers. And then you see these half cut wires. These are called pigtails. In real life, the entire car is one massive wiring harness all connected. But to make my own harness without an entire car, I need the ends of the plugs that go into the modules. So huge thanks to M Parts Worldwide for helping me get these pigtails. I've been using these guys for over five years. They have great prices and are super easy to work with. So if you need any used BMW parts for your project or you wanna follow my footsteps, you can message them on Instagram or shoot them a text. And also huge thanks to Six Speed Auto Parts, which were able to get me all these computers and the matching key for a great price, which of course was important because there's an immobilizer involved. Unfortunately, everything that followed this was not as fun. It was checking wiring diagrams, taking apart connectors, stripping the wires on both ends, the receiving it, you know, one end where I'm trying to connect module A to module B, you know, splicing the wire, twisting the wire. 
grabbing this fancy connector, stripping the other end and getting the lighter to secure it all. And on the big connectors, there were so many pins, I spent a bunch of time just taking apart connectors and stripping wires just to check if I had the correct wire. And if I need to extend the wire beyond the length of the pigtail, which was basically every time, then I needed to do twice the work. I did this for what felt like 80 different times, and I even hired my intern again to help speed things up. Oh, and one quick note, you also need power and ground among everything else. So I decided to grab this fuse box from an E65 series from the mid 2000s and connect all my modules to it. It was just an easy way to distribute power, one source in and many sources out, and I could use BMW fuses to protect all these computers. And this is where the pain and suffering really started. And when I flipped the magic switch to power everything on, nothing. So I thought, okay, I must have miswired everything. So start from ground one, checking wire diagrams and checking every single wire. There were probably about 50 that needed to be tested at that point and everything checked out. I even joined a few Facebook coding groups to hopefully find some professionals, but in the end I got in a battle with a page admin and a number of dead leads. I knew the issue was originating from the white box of pain because the power button wasn't even illuminated. And if you've ever been in a modern BMW, the second it's unlocked, the power button is always illuminated. So the source started from this box of hell. There also isn't a, this is what to do guide anywhere. So I kind of had to think outside the box. Um, maybe the white box was looking for other computers before it could fully boot. Kind of like how Windows won't boot with some drivers or something like that. So I added the last spare module I had, which was the cluster. So I added this up, wired it, everything, flipped it on, no dice. That was the second roadblock. Then I went to the diagrams again and realized that the cluster communicates on something called PTCAN, a completely separate communication bus once one got full. Although I had it connected correctly into the cluster, man, wait till you hear how messed up this is. So the cluster was wired correctly, but the PT can signal actually originates in a completely other connector. It then leaves that connector, goes to a bunch of other modules, and then returns back into another connector right here. And then from there, it is then internally bridged to the connector that goes to the cluster. I swallowed my pride and quickly bridged these two connectors, and lo and behold, I felt the excitement building. Surely, this was it. Because when I flipped the switch, yeah, nothing happened. Now, there are independent tools made to test these white boxes. I found a wiring diagram for one of those test harnesses, and I had all the same wires except one. A single ground wire from this that goes to the column switch. And then, on New Year's Day, after realizing the, correcting this realization, test 480. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy, I bet the fucking hood is open. Tell me about that transmission. So, of course, the start button lit up, the cluster was mad as hell, but then it said the key wasn't present. So, the damn key was right there. Thankfully, BMW has a feature for turning on your car when your key isn't detected. So, I bought one of these off eBay, wired it up, and yeah, nothing happened. I mean, sure, the cluster woke up, but the iDrive unit didn't. So the white box was alive because the cluster was turning on, but everything on the K-Can wasn't, meaning the backlight on the controller wasn't working and the iDrive unit wasn't turning on. Now, if you think I felt internal pain up to this point, this is only the beginning of the great suffrage. At this point, I was just throwing shit at the wall and seeing what stuck. When all hope was lost, I met Hakim. And Hakim, well, Hakim is a genius for all intents and purposes of this video. Hakim pointed out an environmental requirement of KCAN. Okay, so KCAN is a two-wire communication system. The rapid alternating current creates messages, and one wire is basically the inverse current of the other. I'm fighting every urge to go full geek on you, but in short, these two wires need to end somewhere. They need to end with a 120 ohm resistor, and two of them. And that's exactly what I did. I bought a 120 ohm resistor, I spliced it, I added it to my circuit, and finally, I once again experienced nothing. And at this point, I felt more stumped than stumped. I had checked the communication wires like mad, I checked the grounds, 
but I hadn't checked the power. I mean, I checked continuity between the modules and the fuse, but that was it. Like the cluster was getting power, so I assumed the entire fuse box was. And that's where I f***ed up. I still haven't determined where the trigger wire was, but only part of that E60 fuse box was powering up. In fact, it was more coincidental than anything that the cluster even turned on. And thankfully, like any 25 year old, I grabbed my spare fuse box from an F30 and painfully retraced all my power wires to the new fuse box after throwing the E60 one off my balcony. And by the way, the F30 fuse bo box also turns on only partially without triggers. So then I swelled my pride once again and bought a whole new fuse box from Amazon that had no special bells and whistles and voila, that's how we got here today. So what's next? <sighs> well, immediately after this video launches, I'm gonna go post on F30 Post and maybe some Facebook groups and basically find a volunteer to plug in a research kit that, I've, that I have made. It's really someone else's, but I'm gonna make it really simple for someone that they plug into their car and just film themselves driving while this tool is recording what their car is thinking on these communication systems. And then with that tool, I'll be able to plug it into my existing bench and basically watch it like a movie alongside what the person was doing with the car at that time. And with that data, I'll be able to reverse engineer what signals say what, and basically eventually create something that does not need the white box. Anyway, if you liked this video and you found it informative or super rad or whatever the kids are saying these days, make sure to leave it a like. And if you want to eventually see iDrive in an E46 or any other old chassis, because I'll make it completely standalone, make sure to subscribe. And if you want other shenanigans, especially with E46, you're definitely going to want to hang around. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.